Hello, my name is Humphrey Chung and welcome to another Router Gods video. In this video, I'll be showing you how to configure floating static routes. So floating static routes is where you change the administrative distance to prefer one static route over the other. And if the main static route dies, then the backup route takes over. So right here, we're uh, continuing on with our previous router configurations. We've got two routers, router 0 and router 1, and we have two fast Ethernet lines between them. And on router 1, we've got a loopback network hanging off of it. So this loopback interface is 192.168.1.0. This simulates a, another network that would be behind router 1. So you could think of maybe a switch or something back here with a bunch of computers. So what we want to do is we want to configure a static route going from router 0 to router 1. And then configure another static route with a different administrative distance. So it's it's actually it's much easier than it sounds. It's uh, I like to call this ghetto dynamic routing. So dynamic routing like RIP, OSPF, EIGP, that type of stuff, they automatically find routes and they route around uh, routes that are down. So in this case, you're doing sort of the same thing except you you have to hard code it in. So it will only work between generally between two routers to one source and one destination. If you try to configure it on multiple routes, uh, it can get a little messy. All right, so on to the configuration. We're going to router 0. We actually need to set up the IP addresses first, so it's going to be pretty cool. Conf T, interface fast 0 slash 0. And 0 slash 0 is, if I could spell it correctly, IP address. 2.1.1.1 it's a slash 24 no shut int fast 0 slash 1 IP address 1.1.1.1 it's a slash 24 also and no shut so that's pretty easy we go on to router 1 which is our second router and let's see where can we put this I will put it there for now interface fast 0 slash 0 IP address no shut pretty much the same thing on the second fast Ethernet interface and no shut on that and don't forget we have a loopback address IP address 192.168.1.1. Okay, as always, we do our verification. So on router 0, and out of there, we'll ping the other side. Everything works. We'll ping, whoops, that's ourselves, 2.1.1.2. And that works, so everything works out. Okay, so we won't be able to ping the loopback address. Reason for that is we don't have a static route or a dynamic router routing protocol. So our router tries to ping it. It looks it, actually it looks in its routing table. It says it has no route to 192.168.1.0, and it just drops the packet. It doesn't even go out. So we're going to set a static route, conf t. Static route command is IP route, where you want to go to. So it's 192.168.1.0. Give it a mask. So for us to get to the 192.168.1.0 network, we have to go to give the IP address. So here, going to give it an IP address of 2.1.1.2. So that's the fast 0 slash 0 interface. Then when we hit space, we're going to give it a administrative distance. So what metric do you want to give it? We're going to give it a metric of, say, 50. All right, so for the second route just hit the up arrow it's going to copy that command we want to get to the same loopback address so that's not a problem it's the same mask 
And here the only difference is it's the second destination interface. So fast Ethernet 0 slash 1, 1 1.1, 1 1.2. Here we're going to give, give it an administrative distance of 100. Hit enter. Okay, so we exit out of there or end it. So what are we doing here? Well, in administrative distances, lower is better. So 50, it's always going to go to 2.1.1.2. If that fails, then it's going to, this basically becomes infinite, and then the 100 will win. Now, what will happen if we show IP route? We show IP route, and it says we have a S for static route. We can get to 192.168.1.24. We see our 50, which is what we entered up here. And we can get to 50 via 2.1.1.2. Okay, so what happened with this one, this other IP route command? Did that actually work? Well, if we show run, you'll see that it did take. It's in it's in our running configuration. And the reason why it isn't in your show IP route is because it hasn't taken effect yet. So Show IP route basically shows you the, the best paths of getting to, to places, and since it's not the best path, it's not going to be there. So if we do this, if we go into conf t, and let's shut down one of the interfaces. Let's shut down the one that's with uh, 50. So interface fast 0 slash 0. And just, uh, just to verify, do show run int fast. Okay, so fast. We do, before you do a shutdown on any interface, especially in real life, you want to make sure you're you're doing the right one. So fast, fast Ethernet zero slash zero. That's the one with the two, and that's the one with the IP route associated with the administrative distance of fifty. I'm going to shut that down. Boom. End out of there. Show IP route. I can see here we still have a path to the loopback address. It's now via 1.1.1.2. And it's using, it's there, it says it's administrative distance of 100, so it has switched over to the backup route. Now, if we re-enable the primary route, we'll see the 50, the route with the administrative distance of 50, come back online. So, conf t, interface fast 0 slash 0, no shut, end out of there, show IP route. And that was pretty quick. The 50... Administrative distance has taken over once again because 50 is lower than 100 and we're now going back through 2.1.1.2. So just to be clear on this, with with the floating static route, you're not doing load balancing. It's either or proposition to where you have a primary route, which let's say might be your T1. And let's say you have a backup route that is a dial on demand uh, modem or, or something else. Now the dial on demand, it's slower. It is a backup route, but it's slower. It's much slower, and maybe it costs you a lot of money when you're using it. It could be an ISDN line or something also. So your primary route, you want to be go through the faster link. That dies down, then it's going to fail over to your slower link. Okay? So pretty easy command. It's the IP route. You give it a static route, and all you do is you put administrative distance at the end. Thanks again for watching another Router Gods video, and have more soon.